Hey guys, it's Shahir from 5 Academy. So in today's video, I'm going to demonstrate how I would recommend you take an ACT math test and answer the first 30 questions within the first 15 to 20 minutes. We're going to be going fast. And the whole point of this exercise is to show you what timing strategy you should use if you want to have enough time to answer the harder questions at the end of the exam. So the first 30 questions you should be able to knock out within 20 minutes. Um, and this is the kind of pacing that you would want to try to use. So let me go ahead and demonstrate this test for you. All right, let's get started. Pranav runs a luxury car dealership selling cars from four different brands. After a successful summer event, he has six cars from brand one, seven from brand two, 12 from brand three, and 18 from brand four left in his lot. Approximately what percent of cars are from brand two? So how many cars are from brand two? Seven. Okay, and we're going to divide that by the total number of cars, which is, if I do this on my calculator, seven divided by what we have six cars from one, seven from two, 18 from three, uh, or 12 from three and then 18 from the other. That gives us seven out of 43, which is 16%. Uh, this right here, three X minus six equals 18. If I divide both sides by three, we get X minus six equals 18. X, uh, sorry, equals six, X equals 12. Corporation X sells televisions in three variations. Their gross income consists of S small TVs, M medium TVs, and L large TVs. They cost this much each. Which of the following represents their total income last year? You're just gonna multiply each value per TV by the number of TVs and then add them all up, which is C. H of X is defined as this, which of the following is H at five. So three times five squared is three times 25 plus four times five plus six. That's 75 plus 20 plus six. That's 101. Quick fill gas station charges $3 per gallon at $2 per fill up uh, service fee. Their competitor charges 325 per gallon plus a $1 service fee. After how many gallons would uh, the two costs essentially equal? So we're gonna do three X plus two is the cost of the first station and 25 x plus one is the cost of the second. I divide, uh, I'm gonna subtract three x on both sides, subtract one on both sides. These cancel, these cancel, we get one equals 0.25 x, x has to equal four. 10 gallons of just fuel consists of three gallons of solution A, three of solution B, 125 gallons of, of this and 275 of this. How many gallons of solution A are needed for 17 gallons of jet fuel? So for 10 gallons of jet fuel, we have three gallons of A. That means that for 17 gallons of jet fuel, how many, uh, what's the proportion going to equal? So 10x equals 51, divide both sides by 10, we get x equals 5.1. If this is true, then what is x? Uh, you can just make the exponents equal to one another because they have the same base of 15. Subtract uh, 12, subtract three on both sides. x squared plus six x plus nine equals zero, x plus three, squared equals zero, x equals negative three. The following figure is a rhombus divided in half, which of the following must be true. So uh, is A gonna equal B? Not necessarily, you can have A be a much smaller angle than B, and it doesn't even look to be the same here. B is equal to C. These look close, but that's only gonna be equal if these two sides are the same length, and they definitely do not have to be. C is equal to D. This is definitely gonna be true because of alternate interior angles. Um, D is equal to E. That's really just saying the same thing as B is equal to C, which is, we already said that B is wrong, so D has to be wrong. And then is E equal to F? That's, again, saying the same thing as A is equal to B, um, saying this is equal to one of these angles here. That definitely does not have to be true. So A and E are saying the same thing, B and D are saying the same thing, C is the only unique option. If the sum of A and B is 25, and the quotient of A and B is 1.5, what must be the value of A times B? So I'm just going to turn this into A equals 1. Uh, 1.5b, then move that a up here. We end up getting 1.5b plus b equals 25. 2.5b equals 25. b equals 10. That means that uh, a over b, which is a over 10, equals 1.5. That means a equals 15. b times a is going to be 150. When y equals 1 third, which of the following is the value of this? So 15 times 1 third is 5, plus 9 times uh, one third squared is nine times one over nine, that's one. And then uh, one third plus two over three is going to equal one. So your answer is six. Considering the following linear equations, which of the following accurately describe, describes the solution sets for the two equations? I can go ahead and graph them on the calculator. I'm not gonna do that. Um, I can just convert both of them to y equals mx plus b. Divide this all by four. We end up getting y equals negative three over four x plus 12. This one, I subtract half x on both sides then essentially multiply everything by two over, uh, three over two. So I end up getting y equals uh, negative half times three over two x 
plus 3 over 2 times 22. If I bring that down, y equals negative 3 over 4x plus, uh, this turns into 3 times 11. So these are the two lines. They have the same slope, so they're parallel, uh, but they have different y-intercepts, so they never never will intersect. And they'll look like two lines like this, and they'll go on forever without intersecting, so they have no solution. All right, how do we solve this? I see I have a complex absolute value here and then just a singular one here. So this entire thing just equals 14. 8 minus 14 plus 6 is 0. Negative 8 is your answer. The greatest common factor of these is what? I just find the largest number here that is divis that you can divide all of these by to get a whole number. So I can't, uh, if I try 20, 60 over 20, that works. But 75 over 20 is not a whole number, so that's out. If I do 60 over 15, that works. 75 over 15, that works. 120 over 15, that works. The greatest number is 15. The graph below is a depiction of this person's automobile expenses over a certain period of time. Given that she spent 800 total over this period, which of the following is the degree measure of the missing chart value? So let's first find the dollar value here. So I'm going to just do 800 on my calculator. 800, and then I'm going to subtract 250. Just subtract all of the individual costs. Minus uh, 200. We end up getting 100 here. And then if I divide 100 by the total amount, I end up getting the proportion that is made up by this $100 uh, portion, and then multiply that by 360 degrees to find what proportion of 360 degrees we end up having uh, devoted to that part of the circle. This person's five math test percentages are this. If the lowest score is dropped and replaced with the average of the original five scores, which of the following is the new average score? Okay, so we're gonna first find the original average by adding all these values up. 95 plus 86 plus 93. Divide that by the total, you end up getting 87.4 as your original average. Um, now, we need to essentially get rid of 81 and replace that with 87.4 and then calculate the average again. So I'm gonna add 82 plus 95 plus 86 plus 93. Divide that by five, we end up getting 88.68, which is 89%. The two points are in the plane, which of the following is the distance between the two? So in order to do distance formula, you can write out the whole formula, or you can just look at your x values. Think, how far are these two x values? They look to be 9 apart, and then square that. And then look at your y values. How far apart are 8 and negative 4? They look to be about 12 units apart. Take the square root. You're essentially doing Pythagorean theorem. You end up getting 15. You can draw this out, uh, but I'm just kind of doing it mentally. Considering the two lines below, which of the following is the value of the first line slope divided by the second line slope? The first line slope is going to be 3 over 2. The second line slope is going to be 6 over 5. So 3 over 2 divided by 6 over 5 is going to be the same thing as 3 over 2 times 5 over 6. This turns into a 2, so we get 5 over 4. The table below um, shows this person's income over the last week. Which of the following is the difference between the mean and median over the last week's income? So the mean, I'm just going to add up all these values, divide by 7. So I'm going to do that on my calculator. Plus 130, plus 105, plus 245, plus 200, plus 175, plus 95. Divide that by 7, we end up getting 150 as your mean. The median, um, if I sort the values from decreasing in increasing order, uh, and then start canceling them out, 175, 200, 245. So I cancel left, right, left, right, left, right. The middle value is 130. The difference is 20. Which of the following is equivalent to this? Um, this is not. This is this. When you take the square root, it's the same thing as raising something to the half exponent. And we know that an exponent to, the, uh, to an exponent is just when you multiply the exponents together. So this is the answer. This is actually equal to 1 over y to the 2 fifth, um, so that's wrong. This is the same thing as c, like I just showed you, and this is wrong for the same reason as a. When will the product of two integers always be a negative integer? So if you want a negative integer, what happens if uh, they're both positive numbers? m and n are both positive? Well, that, that would be like 3 times 4. That's 12. That's not negative if they're both negative. So let's say negative 3 times negative 4, that gives me 12, still doesn't work. m is positive, n is negative, so negative 3 times 4, that gives me negative 12, so this one works. But let's just check the others. m is negative, so let's say m is negative 4, but I make n a, uh, another negative number, like negative 5, I end up getting a positive number, so that doesn't work. m is odd, odd even doesn't have anything to do with this, so that's out. 
In the 30-60-90 triangle below, the shortest side length has a length of x, and the hypotenuse has a length of 2x. Which of the following must be the length of the, of the other side in terms of square root of x? If you know um, your 30-60-90, you know that this is going to be the answer. You can also do Pythagorean theorem and get that as well. Okay, so in order to do scientific notation, you first multiply these two values here. You're, you're going to basically, you're going to get 8, and you're going to do 10 to the third plus negative 12, which is uh, 8 times 10 to the negative 9. 4x uh, times that is going to give you 12x, and then uh, this times this is going to give you 20x squared minus 10x squared. You end up getting 12x plus 10x squared. In a physics experiment designed to examine gravitational acceleration, Joseph drops a ball had, that has a sensor. The speed sensor's readings provide the table depicted below. This corresponds to time, and S corresponds to speed in feet. Which of the following accurately represents the data? So what's the slope? I can do the difference here, 3, divide by the difference here, 0 0.1. We end up getting a slope of 30. So immediately, these are out. Now what's my y-intercept? It looks like uh, it's when the x's value is just 0, so it's my y-intercept is going to be 6. You find a stop sign and place rubber bands on the corners of the stop sign connecting each corner to each of the other corners of the sign. How many rubber bands will be needed to connect every corner of the sign with all of the other corners of the stop sign? Let's first draw a stop sign shape so we can kind of visualize the problem. It's not perfect, but it gets the job done. So let's start with the first corner. I'm going to have a rubber band there, 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 and there. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them. And then from the other corner, Let's do it from here. I'm going to have a rubber band here, here, here. That's three, four, five, six. I could add another one here, but I already have one. So now we just have six of the blue. We have seven of the orange. Let's do purple now. Let's go from here. One, two, three, four, five. I already have this. You can see there's an orange one already there. And then I already have this. So I have five. You can see the pattern. It's going to be seven plus six plus five plus four plus 3, plus 2, plus 1. Let's just add that up on the calculator. Plus 6, plus 5, plus 4, plus 3, plus 2, plus 1. You end up getting 28. That's your answer there. Circle 1 has a radius R and area A. Circle 2 has an area A, which is double the area of circle 1. If the area of a circle is given by this equation, which of the following is circle 2's radius represented in terms of R? So circle 2's radius is, let's just say it's capital R. Um, I can substitute pi r capital squared for here, and I can substitute pi lowercase r squared for there. I end up getting pi capital R squared equals 2 pi lowercase r squared. Divide both sides by pi. r squared equals 2 r squared. It's square root of both sides. r equals r squared of 2. Which of the following is not a solution of the equation? So let's just factor this. We can do this with the difference of squares. So minus 1. We can do this just by bringing out an x. Solutions are x equals negative 1, 1, 0, negative 5. If 20% of this number, 0 0.2 times, times 75, is 5 thirds of x, what is x? So I can just do 0 0.2 times 75, and then multiply that by 3 over 5. I end up getting 9. 15i times all of this. Okay, so this is just going to give me negative 15 because 15i squared is just negative 15. So we have, uh, and then negative 15 times 1 over 5 is going to give me negative 3. So we really have negative 3i times 4i plus 5. So we get negative 12i squared minus 15i. That's 12 minus 15i. Last problem, given the following triangle, which of the following is sine theta divided by cosine theta? This is just equal to tan theta. Tan theta is just the ratio of sine to cosine, which is going to be opposite over adjacent. In this case, that is opposite over adjacent, C over B. Okay, that's how you do this uh, in, you know, 20 questions, uh, sorry, 30 questions, I hope within 15 minutes. I don't know how much time I've spent, to be honest, but um, hopefully this was helpful. If you want to take this practice exam and more tests that we have a... Uh, like this one. We have new tests that we're making on our site uh, that are updated for the 2023 ACT exam. So go ahead, click the link below. There are free exams that you can check out. Uh, and we would love to help you by, you know, 
using some of our practice content. If you have any questions about how any of this, any of these problems work, or if you want more tutoring or help, you can schedule a free tutoring session with me as well. On our website, we have office hours and tutoring that we help students out with. So best of luck prepping and let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below. All right, we'll see you next week's video.